Hi everyone, this is RJ Ananya and this is RJ Shreya and today we're in the studio with Miss Lata Jagtiani. She's the author of the book Guide the Film Perspectives and we have quite a few questions for her today. So Lata ji, uh, not many people know this but uh, the guide famously had two adaptations, a Hindi one and an English one. What prompted a need for an English version of the guide? Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm really honored to be talking on my favorite subject, Devanand. It was actually uh, an idea that came to uh, Devanand when he was in Berlin and he was showcasing uh, Hum Dono at the Berlin Film Festival. For It was the official Indian entry at the film festival. And over there he ran across uh, Shirley MacLaine and James Mason and a lot of the important actors of uh, Hollywood. And while he was you know, whining and dining with them, he thought to himself, why don't I do something that would go across from India to the international audience? So the mind, his mind was open to the idea of an international film. Anyhow, after that, soon after the festival, he went to London and uh, somebody mentioned the book, The Guide by R.K. Naren to him. And uh, he had not read it. So he managed to get a copy for himself. And he wrote... Uh, in his autobiography, Romancing the Romancing with Life, that I read it in one sitting, sitting on the balcony of my hotel. It was so wonderful to read that book. And he decided that this is the book that is going to become an English version and a Hindi version. So he decided he wanted to do two guides, not just one, which is a Hindi. He wanted to cater to the international audience as well. So the um, the movie, the characters are the same and the storyline, uh, the basis of it is the same. But there are differences in the plot, the way, especially the way it was shot and the way the two movies ended were different. Mm. Why was this uh, the way it was happening? Uh, actually, the English version came out first. Mm. So it was produced and directed first. They were both, you know, uh, trying to bring out both the films simultaneously. But uh, for various reasons, uh, Chetan Anand, who was directing the Hindi version, uh, was having difficulty with Tad Danielski, who was doing the English version. So they put the Hindi version on hold and they said, we'll first go through with the English version and we'll see how uh, it is met by the audience. And then we will go through with the Hindi version. So if you want to see, if you read the book, The Guide, by R.K. Naren, you will find that the English version is more true to the book. It stays more close to the actual uh, story which R.K. Naren had in his mind. Uh, unfortunately for it, the English version was uh, a big flop. It uh, The audience just didn't like it. And even in uh, India when it was released, I think it stayed only for two, three days and it was it was out. It just didn't uh, uh, register with anyone because it, it lacked a proper direction and nobody could really identify with the characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, they went back to the drawing board because Devanand had suffered huge losses. Navketan had suffered huge losses because they had spent so much money on an international version. You have a foreign director. Imagine Pearl Buck's partner. He's doing the film. The costs involved are huge. So he had uh, suffered a lot of losses and people thought this guy is going to go bankrupt. But he was determined. He was a huge risk taker. Mm -hmm. The first film that uh, he and Guruda did together was Bazi. Mm -hmm. Bazi means the gambler. Mm -hmm. The gamble. They were both gamblers. They would take risks. They didn't want to do what was always being done. They never wanted to stick with the straight and narrow. They always wanted to push the envelope. So they decided that, okay, now let's do the Hindi one. Even though I have suffered losses, there's still some people who are uh, confident about me. And he spoke to his brother, Chetan Anand, who was doing the English ver Hindi version. And Chetan Anand said, no, I'm now busy with Hakikat. So please, he begged off. And, uh, you know, one thing after another, finally, he decided to give the film to Vijay Anand. Vijay Anand decided that this film if it comes out with the script that it had in English in translation, it's going to be a super flop. It's not going to work. So he told Devanand, I'm going to revamp the whole thing and I'm going to redo the whole story. 
I'll stick to the basic nuts and bolts of the story, but I'm going to redo the whole thing. If you give me a, a free hand, I'm willing to do it. So Devanand said, fine, go ahead. And he rewrote the whole script. And the, Vijay Anand's scripts are brilliant. You will see the lines that he uses in the in the movie. You don't feel like, you know, you feel like hearing the line again. What did he say to her? What was that one line? You know, that brief lines so sensitively expressed. Beautiful lines. So he redid the whole script. The whole story took a complete turn. And uh, when the Hindi version was released, people didn't know how to react. The movie was like people... Devanand wrote in his book, the phones were not ringing. Nobody was calling us. And Vijayanand and I were looking at each other. What have we done again? We already messed up with the English version. And then he said, after a day, somebody called and says, what have you done? What kind of a film have you created? It's amazing. He says, slowly start, people started going back to the theater to understand the film. Because the film is so multi-layered and the, uh, you know, the last half an hour is so spiritual. It is on the Vedant uh, philosophy. It has a lot to do with Upanishads because Vijayanand was deeply into spirituality. So he was deeply influenced by this and therefore he did that, the two Devanands in that film, which is not there in the book, which is not there in the English version. And he did, he did that scene, which was very daring. Because, you know, to get the attention of the audience and you talk about God for so long, realizing the self, self-actualization. Who are you? Who's this Devanand falling on the floor? Who's this other Devanand? You have to figure it out. So people started going back and then they just couldn't stop raving about the film. It became a major success because Vijay Anand, because Vijay Anand understood the ethos of the public, of the audience, so the, the, both the versions were different because of this. Hmm. So um, we wanted to ask a question about Raju, who's the main character. So in the Hindi adaptation, even though he's more vibrant, he's also a bit more moral. Like he has his own principles and he sticks to them. But in the uh, English version, he's a bit more flirtatious. Like he has his own little charm and he's not afraid to flirt with... Uh, Rosie. So why was the same character portrayed so differently in both the movies? Was it just because the directors were different or was there a deeper connection uh, there? This is a very, very interesting question. Uh, Raju in both is a glib talker. Mm -hmm. He can charm the pants of anyone. Okay, so in both the versions you can see that he knows how to hustle. He's a hustler. Okay, he, he sees the Gujarati crowd, he'll talk in Gujarati. He'll see a Bengali crowd, he'll talk in Bengali. And he'll be charming to the women, knowing that that's the way to get the man. You know, he, he, he knew human psychology. He was a great uh, student of human psychology. Although he was belonging to a small village, uh, I'm just going to go back to this uh, thing. I want to tell you a very interesting thing. How did the character of Raju come to R.K. Narayan? How did he come across? Uh, R.K. Narayan was living in Mangalore. And at, at that time, there was a famine. There was no water. There was a drought. And there was no uh, water in that village uh, in Mangalore. And there was one man who went into the water and stood in the water for 12 days for the water to come. He, he did not eat. He stood in the water. And the water came. So that story was in his head. Okay, he, he kept that in his, uh, you know, what do you call it? Memory bank. He kept that story in his memory bank. Then he went to New York. He, he was traveling. He used to travel. He was in New York. And then uh, he went to do some sightseeing. And in the bus, the sightseeing, the guy, the tourist guide was a glib talker. So he thought, this is the guy. And that's the story. Okay, and he put these two things together. He traveled by train to California and there he sat for about, I think, two months flat the book was written. So the character of the guide actually came from a character in New York. And uh, your question that, is there a more uh, daring aspect to the Raju of the English version and a less daring or a less flirtatious character? 
See, the, the sex component in Hindi cinema was always very controlled. Okay? The censor board was very, very rigid. They wouldn't allow, for example, if you showed a couple uh, holding hands, that was all very well, you can hold hands. But when they came together, the camera would go to the flora and the fauna. Okay, they would switch, they move the camera. Or if there's a honeymooning couple, they would move <coughs> the thing away. So the censor board was very strict about uh, intimate scenes. So a lot of things that Devanand could do in the English version, he could not do in the Hindi version because, remember, he had to get the pulse of the Indian audience. He could not behave in such an outlandish way that the audience stopped empathizing with him. They have to empathize with him. They have to identify with him. So he, he was daring, but only to that extent. It was very subtle. So he you could see him. He was a glib talker and all that. But in the English version, you see Devanand is even visiting a prostitute. You don't see that in, uh, in uh, the Hindi version. So they had to make these characters, Rosie, who's shown as a very selfish, self-centered, ambitious woman in the English version. In the Hindi version, is shown as a damsel in distress. Because how do you justify an extramarital affair in a Hindi movie? We're talking about the 60s. We're not talking about now. Now it's quite... Okay, you know, the OTTs and all will show you. So the characters had to be softened to uh, represent or to at least reflect the Indian audience to a great extent. Whereas over there, the characters had to be more like the Western audience, more bold. Like you can't show, uh, you know, uh, flowers, flora and fauna when a guy is getting close in our Indian censor board. When they saw English movies, they allowed kissing on the screen. But not for Hindi films. They had double standards. So, so uh, many, um, so from our research, we found out that uh, in the English version, they did not keep a reason for Marco to leave Rosie. Um, uh, sorry, for Rosie to leave Marco. Hmm. Uh, Marco finds out that Rosie has been flirting with Devanand and uh, he leaves. Mm -hmm. However, in the Hindi movie, it was justified that Marco was also having an affair with a tribal girl. Mm -hmm. And which is why it was justified for Rosie to leave her uh, marriage, mm -hmm. her house and go live with Devanand. Mm -hmm. So was this also because of the double standards between the Indian and the Western community? Definitely, yeah. It was because of that. Because see, you cannot, uh, at that time, if you see the movies that were brought out, the other man was always the villain. Yeah. Now, in this story, the other man is the hero. Devanand. Now, if he's a hero, he's got to rescue a damsel in distress. He cannot be having a licentious relationship with someone and be a hero. So, therefore, in order for uh, the, like you said, for it to be justified for Rosie to leave Marco, they had to, uh, uh, Vijay Anand had to make, uh, lay the ground. He laid the ground. First, he showed that Marco is neglecting his wife. He doesn't pay attention to her needs. He treats her very badly. He bullies her. Okay, he talks to her rudely. He goes away for days on end. He doesn't bother. All these things, that was one. Then when she attempts suicide and Raju rescues her and he goes and tells Marco, so she, he's not bothered, right? He comes back and he says, so you're doing all these theatrics just to get my attention. In the Hindi version, she attempts suicide three times. Every time Raju rescues her. See, they had to lay the ground because you are now... Uh, reinventing the wheel as such because you are changing the normal pattern of everybody's thought in India is the other man is the crook. So they had to make it different that the other man here is not a crook. The other man here is saving a woman from death. Okay, he's saving her from ignominy, he's saving her from humiliation, he's saving her and he's allowing her to self-actualize. So it's very important for her to self-actualize. She's so talented, but her talent is being neglected. Her husband isn't allowed to work, uh, to to dance. He says, that you've left that world, now you cannot dance. So he he's actually suffocating her. And the other man is actually allowing her to breathe. So you have that, Aaj phir jine ki tamanna hai. So that now I feel like I can flower. Now I feel like living because I can be me. 
So this very interesting thing about all the three characters I have never seen in any Hindi movie yet, where you have all the three characters working towards the peak of their self-actualization. So in Maslow's pyramid, if you know the pyramid, the self-actualization is at the peak. So you have uh, Rosie stepping out of the Devdasi background because she wants can't be a prostitute. She steps out of there and marries a man, although he's years older than her. She marries a man because she wants to get out of that place. For Marco, he needs social acceptability. He needs somebody, a woman that, you know, uh, I, what is it? I'm candy. She's right. pretty. Trophy she's wife. pretty. And people, wherever he goes, you know, he can say, this is my wife. So he's like a respectable guy. Otherwise, it's just a lafanga. Mm -hmm. So he gets her for his social respectability. So he uses her for that. She uses him to get out. Like a transactional now. marriage. Sorry? It's like a transactional marriage. It's a transactional. It's a, in fact, uh, Raju says it. this dialogue in the movie that what is love? Because when they are about to break up, what is Mohabbat Kya I, I wrote it down somewhere. And she says that uh, uh, Mohabbat Ka Matlab Kya Hai? Something like that. So he says, she says that uh, Jab Matlab Hai Tab Mohabbat Nahi Hai. So he says Jab Tumhari Matlab Thi Tabhi Tum Mujh Se Mohabbat Karti Thi. Means you used me. So what happened is that she then discards Marco because he doesn't have, uh, he cannot allow her to self-actualize. And Ro Raju is ready to do that. So she moves one step further towards her goal. Marco, on the other hand, wants anything that will not distract him from his archaeology. He wants to discover ruins which nobody has discovered. So that is his passion. And his wife is his distraction. He doesn't want that. He can have a dancing girl come to him, offer sex, and go away. That's fine. It's not a relationship. It's just lust. He's okay with that. That's just a necessity. It's like that. So he wants to self-actualize as far as his field is concerned. Rosie wants to self-actualize as far as her dancing career is concerned. Raju was helping her, right? First, he was he's a very focused guy. Raju is a guy who is very focused. At stage one, he's focused on his uh, mother and on his friends. Okay, he's very happy. So he's entirely focused there. When his focus shifts to Rosie, he discards his friends, he discards his mother. He, he can be only focused on one thing. So he was focused only on Rosie. He said, anyhow, I'm going to make her flower. I'm going to make her career. I'll lie, I'll do whatever. Because he lies to a lot of people. Oh, we are very busy, we are here, we are there. All that kind of talk. So they say, oh God, we have to, please can you give us a date for her and all that. So he's impressing everyone with his lies. He rescues her because he was focused on her. Okay. Once her career goal was met, he became dispensable, right? So she was not willing to tolerate him. She didn't want him to come to the room. She found him obnoxious. He found his habits bad. He was drinking. He had drinking buddies. He was gambling. All the, Everything she started finding fault. Then, because he was discarded by Rosie, he went in the book, if you see, in the book. He's in the jail. And in the jail, he's a picture of charm again over there. That part is not there in the movie. He's great. He wins all the people's hearts in the jail. He comes out of jail. He goes to the village. He wins everybody's hearts in the village. He does not know that he's actually evolving to his own self-actualization. So now the focus became the villagers and what they want. And if they want water and if they want the rain and if he has told them that story which his mother had told him about Devaka, he's going to make that story come true. That's it. So that was his self-actualization. So every, you see all the three characters reach the pinnacle of what they wanted. So it comes full circle for Raju's character. Yes. So as you've already mentioned, Guide was a very uh, brave adventure for Devanand to take on. Yes. Uh, similarly, movies like Bazi and CID ushered in a wave of noir films in the 50s and Devanand was the pioneer. He bought the trend uh, into the Indian cinema. Uh, what convinced him that such films would work in India? Uh, because they eventually did find a big success. I think he and Gurudat uh, were very big friends. They were, they were working together in a film called Hum Ek Hai. 
and over there they met and they became uh, very close friends and they used to go and watch a lot of Hollywood films and uh, of course a lot of film festival movies and all that they used to watch. They had a, both of them were very, uh, they were ahead of their times, both of them. They didn't want to come out with a run of the mill kind of story. They wanted to do something different. They wanted to do something which was ahead of the time, a, a story which would intrigue, which would hold the audience's uh, uh, attention and which would entertain. So this balance was there. So now it was very important for Devanand to create an anti-hero for himself. But the anti-hero had to be 90% good, 10% bad. So the, the charm element is very important in Devanand's films. He's always a charming man. And of course, the other thing was that uh, in the noir uh, category, in all these uh, noir films, Bazi was one. CID was not his. CID was Raj Khosla's. But uh, the film was Gurudat's. It was produced by Gurudat, directed by Raj Khosla. But uh, again, Gurudat and Devanand, they were totally in tune with each other. So they had this concept that you have to show crime. In fact, uh, recently I was just studying, I think Devanand's films, uh, in the maximum number of times you will see in any actor, that you will see a jail. You'll find a jail in somewhere. Somewhere or the other, either his father was in jail in Kalapani or he is in jail in Guide. You'll find some jail somewhere or the other. So he's always involved with those who are living on the uh, skirts of society, who are not part of the mainstream, who are somewhere lost. And this is the other thing in his stories, that you find uh, the character, the protagonist, is has got entangled with something which is messy. And he somehow, with the help of a good woman or with whatever help, he evolves and he gets out of it. So the, the crime element is there and then he gets out of it. So that is the natural progression of most of his films. Some of his films, like uh, you have uh, Tere Ghar Ke Samne, it's different. Tere Ghar Ke Samne, you have, again, it's Vijay Anand's brilliant script and direction. He, showing a man, has fallen in love with a woman, but both the fathers, like Romeo and Juliet, they hate each other. The families are sworn enemies. They used to be friends, and then they became enemies. And Devanand is trying to bring them both together. So that's a little different story. But normally what happens in his Tere Mere Sapne, also you have, uh, it's based on A.J. Cronin's book. Uh, maybe I'm going off uh, over here. Instead of talking on Guide, I'm talking on other films. But here again, you see a doctor who was idealistic, then he went wrong, he strayed in his marriage, he started uh, getting very, very mercenary about uh, dealing with patients, and then he finds his way back. So it's this kind of a story which uh, attracted Devanand and even uh, Gurudath. But in Gurudath, the final culmination was at Kagas Ke Pool, where he doesn't find his way back. He He's completely gone. So... So, um, do you think noir films, since they dominated the decade of the 50s, do you think we could say those were his forte or was he just versatile, versatile enough for like everything? Yeah, he was versatile. I mean, he's acted, as I said, look at Raju Guide. He was a guide, I mean, in a small town. Uh, in Tere Mere Sapne, he was a doctor. In uh, Mere, Tere Ghar Ke Samne, he was an architect. Uh I mean, he's done, uh, you know, uh, Bazi, he's an anim of Kala Bazaar, he's selling tickets in black. You know, he's done various kind of roles. But, you know, there's one thing about Devanand films. He's not as great an actor as uh, Dilip Kumar is, as an actor. But as a star, you cannot beat him. So he always retained the star quality. The three of them, Raj Kapoor, Devanand and Dilip Kumar, were considered the, the trio mm, that the were at the top. Yeah, the trinity. And each one had his genre. You know, Raj Kapoor had his way of reaching out to the, the poor people, the peasants, and, you know, the simple people. He was a Charlie Chaplin. He would do a little bit of comedy, and that was his uh, forte. And Dilip Kumar would be more the tragic hero. And uh, Devanand was the charming man, the westernized guy, you know. So in all his films, you will see that he retains that part that aspect of him, which is what made the film also saleable. So to that extent, he was a little bit limited. 
but by and large he did all kinds of roles so in short he was like the shahrukh khan or the salman khan of those of that era uh i i'm sorry if i, I may sound a little odd here but i would not call him shahrukh khan and salman khan have got years to go yeah I to think... be anything like devanan because they are they are just stars devanan was a star and an actor and i don't know how how i would say i mean shahrukh khan was good two three films and whatever he did after that he's just been hamming you know it's the hamming part it's too much hamming so, whereas if you see devanand you start with his career in the 50s he goes on all the way till the 19 uh, i would say 75 hari rama hari krishna till there he carried it through jewel thief i mean look at those films you know it's amazing the kind of roles he has done i wouldn't put uh, sorry i mean i'm not of this generation so perhaps i see it differently but i wouldn't put him in that category amir khan yes he has the star quality plus he has the uh, acting ability so i would say maybe amir khan but not salman i and think also that actors in the previous century like post partition they had that charisma and uh, because they were also good actors and ott and social media was not a thing so they were kind of inaccessible so there was also that mystery about mystery, them yeah. which i don't think you get like no. after, during the 90s and all i think it started to fade away yes and it's kind of non existent the mystique now. yeah the yeah. mystique because whatever there were hardly three four magazines that would be writing about them and then they were also you know not very honest so many of them would write what they were told to write so you know it was like that it was not a big industry like it is today there is no star like devanand currently there will there never will be is that your opinion or mine <laughs> no my like it's very apparent is there i think is, i think yes uh, very little people hold the same power as yeah him. many people compare him with gregory peck Mm-hmm. because uh, gregory peck and he there's a lot of resemblance if you see and he, they had met each other also but uh, uh, our own gregory peck had his own charm uh, he was very westernized mm. and very sophisticated very well read uh, so all these things come across so when you're talking to an urban audience the urban audience would like somebody like this mm-hmm. the more uh, rustic audience would more identify with the raj kapoor right so he was more the sophisticated intelligent educated kind of guy who charmed his way out in the world mm-hmm. did the wrong things but finally found his way back so um one last question that we had for you was about female leads in his uh-huh. movies so um in one of her interviews wahida rahman said that dev sir was one of her only contemporaries who encouraged her to take up the role of rosie because everyone else was telling her that this is career suicide you know you're taking up the role of a court person yes because you are the the uh, the woman who's straying from a marriage yes yeah and navketan films was also known to kind of give considerably more space to their female leads in their movies as compared to other productions like a lot of articles have mentioned this and devanand himself he tried a lot that you know his female lead would also have her own path yeah. in the movie and yeah. not just be like a afterthought yes so what is your opinion yeah she that? was not always the arm candy but one good thing about devanand or maybe i should say it is his uh, way of uh, raising his own stature in most of his films you will find at least two or three women if you see teen devia there are yeah. three women who are crazy about him right okay, okay. you will find a uh, jewel thief you have uh, vijanti mala then there's tanuja then there's parial then there's uh, somebody else okay then there's another film uh, uh, which you know is that you know you will find mumtaz and then you have hema malini okay so what happens is that he wants to increase his uh, uh attraction uh, no i would say what what is the word i would say <laughs> sexual quotient maybe sexual quotient by having these women who are crazy about him so like everybody loves him so you have to love him that kind of atmosphere is created the aura around him the female lead in uh, for example in guide rosie he is given her such a big role he's got she's got fabulous songs Pia to se nena lage ra the biggest song in the Very film. Very iconic. Evergreen iconic. song. Iconic. Aaj phir jeene ki tamanna hai. Mostly what happened is that uh, you know 
the the person who's producing the film, like Devanand was producing the film, he would like to be in every frame, you know. But what Devanand would do is he would give the scene to the heroine. Act now; it's your turn. So elevate the film, not elevate me only. He would have these other women also, but the actress who was in that scene, like the uh, scene in which uh, Tanuja is singing that song, uh, "Raat Akeli Hai." Okay, I don't know whether you've seen it. Look at the whole scene. How daring! How bold! Yeah. How she's flirting with him, and you know, he's just given it to her. That's it. Tanuja's career is made with that one song. So he would give that platform to the other woman. He had that uh, generosity to say, "I'm giving you the space now. Do it." It's it, that kind of thing. Same thing with Guru Dutt. He would give the heroine the space. Come on, show us what you can do. Vaidya Raman said in her book, uh, uh, "The Sin Muni Kabir Has Written," that for CID when she met him, that was the first time they met. So she said, uh, uh, "Devanand Sab." She says, "Don't call me Devanand Sab. Call me Dev." So she says, "But you are such a big star." She says, "No, no, I'm just Dev." And I, I can tell you personally, myself, I was 14 or 15 years old. I was crazy about Devanand, and I I remember I used to want to write to him, but I didn't know his address. <laughs> so we used to have these directories which were this big. So one day I got got into me. I look up his number, and I found his number. I said. Anand Dev, Iris Park, Juhu, and I saw his number. I said, "Oh God, I've got his number! It's amazing!" So that I couldn't sleep. Then after a day or two, I said, "I'm going to call him." I picked up the phone and I called him, and he picked up and says, "Dev here." He'd always say, "Dev here." Must have been so unexpected. <laughs> oh my you. God! I put yeah. the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He picked up the phone. <clears throat> I said this is too much I couldn't sleep the guy picks up the phone himself it's not like you need a telephone operator or anything not many people had phones in those days we were one of those lucky ones so after a few days I called him again and he picked up the phone he'd always say dev here I met him I have known him I've spoken to him many times I used to speak to me for half a hour On the while guide was being done, I have spoken to him about Pearl Buck, about A. J. Cron, and about so many things. He was so well read. He was an amazing human being, very down to earth. And I pretended that I was a secretary in a company. I was only fourteen or fifteen. I just wanted to talk to him. He was so brilliant. But did he believe you when you said that? Yes, he, he did. He says, "Where is your company?" I said, "It's called Industrial Engineering." So, where is Industrial Engineering? It's, it's you know at Fountain because my neighbor he owned that company, okay. Industrial Engineering. That's how I got the money. It was right across uh, what is now the Stock Exchange. So I said, "Industrial." I'm a secretary there. Oh, okay. What are your What are your timings? I said, nine to five. Oh, okay. That's nice. But you read a lot. So I said, "Yeah, I do read a lot. I love reading." So, so which books of Isaac Cronin have you read? So I talk about books and all that to him. I say, "Okay, I'll call you again." बंद करो वॉज ही एज चार्मिंग एज ही पोर्ट्रेड हिम एब्सोलूटली मच मोर मच मोर ही वॉज अ ब्रिलियंट पर्सन अ ग्रेट ह्यूमन बींग आई एम सो हैप्पी दैट आई फाइनली एंड वेन हम दोनों केम आउट इन कलर आई वॉज द फर्स्ट वन टू गो एंड सी द फिल्म इन आईनॉक्स देर वर जस्ट फोर पीपल इन द थिएटर नो बडी वॉज वॉन्टिंग टू सी द फिल्म बट इट वॉज ब्रिलियंट आई वेंट होम आई कॉल डेम अप आई हैड इज मोबाइल नंबर I called him up and I said, "What a film you've come! It's unbelievable." He says, "I'm so happy you told me this. A few people have called me. You know how you talk like that—that that English accent. A few people have called me and they've told me." So I said, "You, it's brilliant. I'm going to see it again tomorrow. I'm going to take my brother with me and all." He says, "Let me know how you felt about it the second time." So okay, but there was a very poor response. They had to take it off. But this shows that he actually cared about the opinions people had, and he, he had a desire to know. Absolutely, he was an extrovert, but he would never uh, party. He was not a party animal. He would not drink. He was if somebody forced him, he would hold the drink all through the evening and not drink. Oh, yes, I still have my drink. He was very disciplined about his uh, sleep timings and this and that. So he wouldn't waste time. He was one of those people who was very clear. About his life, where he wants to go, right till the end. I met him last. Uh, the only time I met him when he was coming out with a film called Chart Sheet, 
and he did a press conference. I was there. I took pictures with him, and uh, he was so charming. He believed in himself right till the end, though he was useless as an actor by then. He couldn't act for nuts. <laughs> he couldn't act for nuts at that point. But he was so strong about his belief. His self belief was unbelievable. So, in a way, we can say that he was fully immersed in his art. Absolutely. Till the very end. Yes, he died with his boots on. Absolutely. Okay. And that's the way he wanted it. So that was good. I think that's a good way to. End this interview. Wrap up the interview. Thank, Thank you, Lata Ji. Thank for you so much for listening to me. I'm sorry, I may have gone here and there. No, but in. we are delighted to hear these <laughs> stories because this is not something we could read in just any magazine yeah. or something. So very precious things mm. to know. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am.